On wet and rainy days, we typically feel uncomfortable because the high humidity prevents sweat from evaporating. To make us feel better, we can use a dehumidifier to remove moisture from the air. In this video, we will discuss how a dehumidifier works and also demonstrate its performance. Let us first take a look and see what is inside a common dehumidifier we can find at home. If we open the cover, we will see that there is a compressor at the bottom and a winding tube made of copper on top. There are actually two parts to the copper tube. The outside part is called the evaporator, and the inside part is called the condenser, and it is filled with a chemical substance with a low boiling point called a refrigerant. When we turn on the compressor, it will generate a pressure difference between the evaporator and the condenser. The evaporator will cool down as seen in the infrared video on the right, while the heat is transferred to the condenser. That is why the temperature at the back side of the copper tube increases. Since the evaporator is cold, when moist air passes through it, water vapor in the air will be condensed out, kind of like the reason why water condenses on the surface of a cold beer, except without a beer. So the air will become drier. Because the air will also pass through the condenser, it will heat up and get hotter when it comes out. Now that you know how a dehumidifier works, let's see how well it is able to remove moisture from the air. To do that, I put the dehumidifier in a wet room and monitor the condition of air at the inlet and outlet of the dehumidifier using a dual probe temperature humidity sensor. This sensor has two probes in it, an internal probe which is located inside the casing and an external probe outside so that we can measure the temperature and relative humidity at two different locations. First, I put the sensor at the inlet of the dehumidifier, so the internal probe can measure the condition of air of the outlet. We can then extend the external probe so that it will measure the inlet temperature and relative humidity. Before we start the dehumidifier, the room has a temperature between 25.5 and 26 degrees Celsius and a relative humidity of about 80%. After starting the dehumidifier, we see that the outlet temperature increases while the relative humidity decreases. The condition of air of the inlet and outlet are marked on the psychometric chart on the right, and we can see the changes in real time. Since our test is going to run for 2 hours, we have sped up the video here 120 times. We know that the humidifier is functioning because the inlet temperature is about 26 degrees Celsius with a relative humidity of about 80%, corresponding to a moisture content of about 17 gram per kilogram. Whereas, the outlet temperature is about 38 degrees Celsius with a relative humidity of about 25%, corresponding to a moisture content of about 11 gram per kilogram. So the moisture content of the outlet is lower than that of the inlet. Also, at the end of the test, we see water accumulated in the bucket below. So you may ask, how well does the dehumidifier work? If we look at the front of the dehumidifier, we will notice that there is an energy label there. There are three parameters that tell us the performances of the dehumidifier. The first one is the annual energy consumption, which is how much energy is used per year. Second is the dehumidifying capacity, which is the rate of water removal measured in liter of water per day. The last one is called the energy factor, which is the amount of water that can be removed per kilowatt hour. The values on the energy labels are measured at 26.7 degrees Celsius with a relative humidity of 60%. So, how can we check to see if the values given on the labels are reasonable or not? To be able to do that, we need to first know the power used by the dehumidifier and also how much water it can remove. For the power usage, we can plug the dehumidifier into a power meter like this one. We can see that the power use is 163 watt. Since the annual energy consumption is calculated assuming a 450 hours operation per year, the annual energy consumption in our experiment turns out to be 73 kilowatt hour, which is quite close to the 71 kilowatt hour as specified on the energy label. Next, for the dehumidifying capacity, we can use a balance to measure out the weight of the water from our experiment. After 2 hours, the total mass of water collected is 871 gram. So if we convert to liters per day, it corresponds to a dehumidifying capacity of 10.5 liter per day, a bit higher than that on the energy label, 
but that is because the relative humidity of our room is about 80%, higher than the 60% as specified by the energy label. Now that we know the power usage and the amount of water that is collected, we can also estimate the energy factor for the 2 hour period, which is about 2.67 liter per kilowatt hour, slightly better than the value given on the energy label. We can actually do one more analysis here, which is to estimate the cooling capacity of the dehumidifier and the coefficient of performance of the refrigeration cycle. In order to do that, we will also need to know the flow rate of the air. Since we have measured the exact conditions of the inlet and outlet of the dehumidifier with respect to time, we can actually estimate the air flow rate based on the amount of water collected and the difference in absolute humidity of the inlet and the outlet, that is, the area between the curves. Assuming that the air flow rate is constant throughout the experiment, we can estimate it to be about 0.023 kg per second. The cooling capacity can now be estimated assuming that the dehumidifier first cools the air from the inlet to the dew point of the outlet, which is the state X here, then heats it to the outlet temperature. Here, state X has a temperature of 14.7 degrees Celsius. The cooling capacity is the air flow rate multiplied by the enthalpy difference between the inlet and state X. From the psychometric chart, we can tell that the inlet has an enthalpy of 68.82 kJ per kilogram, and state X has an enthalpy of 41.28 kJ per kilogram. Therefore, the cooling capacity here is about 0.633 kW. Since the coefficient of performance of the refrigeration cycle is the cooling capacity divided by the applied power, so it is 0.633 divided by 0.163, which is about 3.9 here. We can see that the COP here is relatively reasonable. I hope this video gives you a better idea of the performance of a dehumidifier. I would like to end here with a question for you. You may notice that the components inside a dehumidifier, namely the compressor, evaporator, and condenser, can also be found in air conditioners. Then, what are the main differences between a dehumidifier and an air conditioner? Comment below if you know the answer. See you next time. Bye bye.